Good morning, everyone. It's Pastor Mike Philibert at Heritage Presbyterian Church for morning prayer on Monday, Monday, the 16th of September. And so we're going to be using and looking at Psalm 32 and then Mark, the gospel according to Mark, chapter 11, starting at verse 1. And so here's Psalm 32. A masculine of David, blessed is the one whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. Blessed is the man against whom the Lord counts no iniquity, and in whose spirit there is no deceit. Paul will refer to those two verses in Romans chapter 3 as he begins talking about justification, our being put on God's good side by Jesus' own goodness. The writer goes on, For when I kept silent, my bones wasted away through my groaning all day long, for day and night, your hand was heavy upon me. My strength was dried up as by the heat of summer. Selah. I acknowledge my sin to you, and I did not cover my iniquity. I said, I will confess my transgression to the Lord, and you forgave the iniquity of my sin. Selah. Therefore, let everyone who is godly offer prayer to you at a time when you may be found. Surely in the rush of great waters they shall not reach him. You are a hiding place for me. You preserve me from trouble. You surround me with shouts of deliverance. Selah. I will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. I will counsel you with my eye upon you. Be not like a horse or a mule. <laughs> be not like a horse or a mule without understanding, which must be curbed with bit and bridle, or it will not stay near you. Many are the sorrows of the wicked, but steadfast love surrounds the one who trusts in the Lord. Be glad in the Lord and rejoice, O righteous, and shout for joy, all you upright in heart. Psalm 32. Sorry, it made me chuckle about don't be like a horse or a mule without understanding. <laughs> so anyways, so now we're in the gospel according to Mark chapter 11. And here, the gospel of Mark, like all the other gospel accounts, slows way down. It has spent th just, just a few pages on thir three years and now it's going to spend several pages on just seven days, starting with here, the triumphal entry. Now, when they drew near to Jerusalem, to Bethphage and Bethany at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the village in front of you, and immediately as you enter it, you will find a colt on which no one has ever sat. Untie it and bring it. If anyone says to you, What are you doing? Why are you doing this? Say, The Lord has need of it, and we'll send it back here immediately. And they went away and found a colt tied at a door outside in the street. And they untied it. And some of those standing there said to them, What are you doing untying the colt? And they told them what Jesus had said. And they let them go. And they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their cloaks on it. And he, and he sat on it. And many spread their cloaks on the road. And others spread leafy branches. So in John, the gospel according to John, those leafy branches, many of them are palm leaves. Leafy branches that they cut from the fields. And those who went before and those who followed were shouting, Hosanna, which in the Hebrew means, save us. Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our father David. Hosanna in the highest, save us to the utmost. And he entered Jerusalem. And went into the temple. And when he had looked around at everything, as it was already late, he went to Bethany with the twelve. That was Mark 11, 1 through 11. Well, let's pray. Lord God in heaven, we are grateful that you have preserved uh, Mr. Trump and in this uh, attempted shooting recently. Lord, I pray that people get their brains back and start to get their heads on straight again and quit being so... Um, senseless, some of these attempts like this. Lord, I pray that you would continue to preserve and protect him and also Mr. Biden and Miss, Miss Harris, that you would preserve them all. And uh, thank you for the secret service. Lord, we pray for our own lives. We pray for our own engagements. We pray for this coming week, Lord, that we would walk always with you, knowing that you are the one who no longer takes account of our sins because of Jesus, that um, you don't hold them against us, Lord, that we have been put on your good side because of Jesus, because of Jesus' own goodness, and that that covers us 
And for that, we can rejoice. And so I pray that though many are the sorrows of the wicked, yet steadfast love is what surrounds the one who trusts in you. And so may we always be glad in the Lord. May we always rejoice. May we always shout for joy. May we thrive in this joy. In Jesus' name, amen. There you go, friends. That was morning prayer. I'll be back again tomorrow. Until then, the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace and believing that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen.